Afternoon guys, Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters in the Pathfinder School back down here at the Pathfinder Outdoor Classroom, back with another 10 minutes to better land navigation. I apologize, every one of these videos so far has been over 10 minutes, but I wanna cover the material. So I'm basing it on 10, maybe 12, maybe 14, 15, but the closer we can get it to 10 minutes. Right now we're still talking about our compass. We haven't got into maps yet. We haven't got into declination yet. We're gonna talk about declination, most likely in the next video or the one after that. And I'm gonna simplify all of that for you. Navigation is not difficult. Navigation is very, very simple, as long as you can explain it to people and make it simplistic. And that's what the whole Pathfinder system is based on. Taking things down to the most rudimentary level so they're easy to understand. So, the first thing we need to discuss with our compass now that we understand how to, which compass we're gonna carry, we understand what that compass will do for us without a map. Now we need to understand how to travel with that compass, okay? And there's five things we need to understand while we're traveling with a compass and no map. We need to understand pace count. We'll talk about that in a minute. We need to understand the travel log and how to keep a travel log. We need to understand what waypoint markers are and why they're used. We need to understand how to avoid obstacles and to estimate distance. And that's important as well, especially when you are hiking alone. It's much more important than if you have someone with you to leapfrog. So we're going to talk about these five things one at a time. All right, so the first thing we're going to discuss is pace beads. What are pace beads? Why do we carry them? Pace beads are nothing more than a vertical abacus. All right, it's an adding machine on a string. That's all it really is. And all you're doing with that is keeping track of the paces that you've walked or the distances that you've walked in meters using your pace count. Everything that I do here at the school is based on the metric system because I believe it's easy. We'll talk more about that when we get to maps, but 10 being Euclid's perfect number, 10s are easy to understand. Multiply, multiplying by 10 is very easy to understand. So I base all of my navigational teachings on that precept. Now, when you set up a set of pacing beads, and this could be, you know, you're tying knots in a string. It could be that you are putting rocks in your pocket and transferring them back and forth. But the most convenient way to do that is just to put 14 beads on a string, any kind of bead, it doesn't matter, all right? Put four on one end to put a knot in there with some room to move them, and nine on the other end with enough room to move them, okay? So we got nine and four. Now what we have to figure out is what our pace count is. And what's important about that is, is that that will help us understand how far we have traveled. And that's going to become very important, both with map reading and even if we don't have a map, it's important to be able to stay found. And we'll talk about that as we go, all right? So how do we figure out our pace count? Our pace count is based on one full step. So if you step off with this foot, when the next foot hits the ground, that's one. So it's one full step, half step, one. To figure out our pace count, all we need to do is take the load that we normally carry, and that's important because it changes your pace count. We need to lay out 100 meter tape, 100 meters of rope, anything like that will work. You can take it to a park, you can take it off road, you can take it anywhere you wanna take it, lay it out, get your pace count in several different mediums, uphill, downhill, flat terrain, undulating terrain, soft ground, hard ground. You can make it as complicated as you want to, but I would start off with uphill, downhill, flat ground, back and forth. Once you get all of these pace counts and you figure out how many paces it is to make that 100 meters, let's just say it's 62. One of them was 69, one of them was 63, one of them was 64. Whatever the case may be, take all of those numbers and average them and you'll get an average pace count of what your pace count is. Mine's about 62, 63, okay? Once you understand that, then you can go back to this. Then you can go and count only to 62 instead of counting to 4,981, all right, when you're traveling. So you count to 62 and you've got this somewhere. I keep mine actually on my SAK right there, pace lanyard, okay? You can hang it off your backpack. My normal backpack, has a set of pacing beads hanging off of it that have always been there, so I just leave it there. It doesn't weigh anything. 
This is the set that's in my nav kit. So once you've walked 100 meters, you take one of these nine beads and you drop it down. Now you've walked 100 meters. Start over with your count. You get to 62 again in my case. I drop another bead and now I've walked 200 meters and so on until I get nine beads to the bottom. On my next count to 62, I will take one of these beads and I'll either move one up or one down. Doesn't really matter which direction you go, as long as you remember what you're doing. I like to go down with everything. So now I've walked one kilometer and I slide these back to the top and start over. So I've walked one kilometer and I start again, I get to 62. Now it's 1100 meters, one kilometer, 100 meters. One kilometer, one, two, three, four, 500 meters. And once I get these down and these down and I get to my next 62, I've walked five kilometers. So this is a five kilometer device. Okay, now, before we move on from pace count, I'm gonna tell you something that's probably going to confuse a lot of people. A lot of people are gonna be like, I don't even know why you do that. Once you do it, you're gonna figure out why you did it and what makes it so much better. If you are not using a map, and remember that right now, we're not using a map. So our measurement system is in paces. When we use pace beads in their conventional methodology, we're converting our paces to meters because we're going from paces to now it's 100 meters, okay? What I would tell you, if you do not have a map, if you do not have a map, disregard everything I just said for the last five minutes, but it explains how pace count is supposed to be used for later in these lessons. And now I'm gonna tell you how I would do this if I were going to navigate over land with no map. I would count every one of these beads as 100 paces and these major beads at the bottom would be 1,000 paces, not meters. Because on my travel log with no map, the only measurement system I need to be concerned with is pace count. So if I walk 100 paces and drop a bead until I've walked 900 paces and then drop a bead and I've walked 1,000 paces, it's very easy for me to convert that later when I need to know how far it is to something or back to something by just saying it's X amount of paces. And I know how many beads that's gonna be as I go. You're going to have to convert later from paces to meters or meters to paces. Don't overcomplicate it now if you don't have to. And all that's doing is convoluting the system by starting off with meters and counting in paces. So use this as, again, the perfect number 10. I walk 100 paces, easily divisible by 10, I drop a bead. When I've walked 1,000 paces, I drop one of these major beads, and now I've walked 1,000 paces. So now, instead of 5,000 meters, this is tracking 5,000 paces. Now, believe me when I tell you that what I just told you to do with these pace beads, no one else teaches, all right? This is going to make your life so much easier. Number one, you don't have to count paces anymore beforehand. Your pace count doesn't even matter. All that matters is how many paces you walked. It's going to be an average in the end because you're gonna be walking probably over undulated terrain anyway. So the only thing that really matters is that we track our paces if we have a compass. If we have a map, we can easily convert that to meters later. And we'll talk about that. So think about that because this is a very unconventional way to use pace beads, but it is definitely the best way. Okay, the next thing we need to understand is keeping a travel log. That's why we carry a notebook and pencil or pen, okay? A travel log does not need to be overcomplicated at this stage of the game. You need three columns on that piece of paper. The azimuth you're traveling on, the pace count, pace count, and notes. Did I see something interesting along the way? Did I have to box an object? Did I estimate a distance? We'll talk about that as we go, all right? So wherever I start, whether that's at my car, at my camp, 
at an unknown location, whatever it is, wherever I start, I'm going to shoot an azimuth and travel on a bearing in some direction from that. That's in here first. So let's say arbitrarily it was 220 degrees. All right. Now I just need to track how many paces I walk until I change direction. If I change direction by one degree, I need to notate that. Okay. So let's say I walked 175 paces and then nothing here. Okay. And then I changed directions at the 175 paces and I went to 168 degrees and I walked for 120 paces and again, nothing, nothing to see here. Right. And so on and so forth. And I want that at every single turn I make. Now, that's our travel log. And it's going to come into play later in this whole thing to avoid getting lost. We'll talk about that in probably the next video before we move on to declination. All right, guys, I'm Dave Canberra with Self-Reliance Outfit in the Pathfinder School. I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for school, for family, for business, for all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. And I'll be back with another video in this series as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.